Here now is Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells with Talk to Tom. Sponsored by Greenway Dodge. It had to be like five or ten seconds as soon as she stepped outside when I heard like the loudest boom that I've ever heard. You kind of read about those things, but you never really think about them actually happening, especially to someone you know. A husband talking about the moment his wife was struck by lightning is just gripping. Like he said, it's something you never expect to happen to you or someone you love, but it did happen to them. Welcome to Talk to Tom. I'm News 6 Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells. This is lightning strike survivor Rebecca Soto and her husband, Laura Soto. Thank you both so much for coming in to talk to us today on Talk to Tom about this. We, we've told you their story before here on News 6, but for those of you who don't know, Rebecca, you were the one who was struck by lightning. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about um, that day, that moment, and, and, and how it happened, what happened? Yeah, so I just finished the work day at home and had the Beyonce concert the next day that I was really excited about. So I was getting my outfit all laid out and ready. I just finished, you know, painting my nails, like yeah. getting hyped, you know, Regular we're excited. Stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and I don't remember much, but my guess is probably like getting ready to rain outside. And so I wanted to take the dog out real quick before the rain started. Um, so that was August 15th was the day, um, and I, I honestly don't remember much about even much of that day or afterwards. Well, okay, so mm -hmm. you say you're getting ready. Uh, there were no warnings? You didn't know of any warnings or any approaching? No. Hadn't heard any rumbles of thunder? I don't remember. <laughs> just, just normal day, nothing. Wow. So you step outside and boom, obviously you did get hit. You were the one who found her mm -hmm. face down. Tell me about that. Yeah, I mean, like she said, it was just kind of a typical evening, you know, both ending the day, de decompressing from the from the work day, and yeah, she goes outside. You know, we've lived in Florida for a few years now, so you can kind of tell, like, oh, I think it's gonna rain soon. Mm -hmm. So, like, like she said, she wanted to go take our dog out to potty before, you know, it started just pouring. And then, yeah, I felt like just a few seconds after she had stepped outside is when I'd heard the boom, and that's when, you know, I went outside immediately to kind of see, you know, what had happened. You know, I'm sure she had seen something because it set the alarms off in our apartment. So oh, it was shook like, the house. Yeah, like I've just never experienced something like that before. And so when I went outside, uh, this is when I found her lying face down on the on the sidewalk near the grass. So wow. it was definitely a scene. And you dialed 911, they came running? Yeah, so I kind of, I mean, I tell people, I don't know what I was thinking in that moment. I feel like my body just kind of went into autopilot right. and I went over to her uh, and I called 911 immediately. And then the only thing I could think of to do that moment is just to you know, start CPR. So did she have a pulse or was she like gone for you? Well, I, I don't even remember if I checked fully. <laughs> like I, it was just, it happened so fast. Mm -hmm. Like I just, I knew she was unresponsive because of the way she was laying face down. And when I flipped her over, you know, I called to her, you know, I did nothing. And, and I'd feel like every second is probably a big deal in those situations. And so, yeah, I just, I called paramedics immediately wow. and then I just started doing what I think I knew what to, how to do. Had you and, ever had a CPR class before? Uh, in high school, yeah. There you <laughs> know, I had a health science class mm -hmm. and, and several of those and we had to be certified in CPR, but nothing that I, you know, kept up with yeah, my certification was probably so long ago um, but yeah it's just the first thing I could think of and then just started doing that I could talk about CPR all mm -hmm. day because the, for, for those of you at home watching he did the right thing by trying you might have screwed it up a little <laughs> but obviously she's still here so even if you mess it up a little try this is my, mm -hmm. my tip on that we'll talk more about that later yeah. let's talk about the process you went through afterwards so 911 shows up emergency ambulance to take her rush to the hospital um, what was that process like for you? How long were you there? What, what went on? Yeah, um, I know I was in the hospital for about a week or so, but my memories of that time are really hazy. Like, I hardly remember anything. Um, I know you probably know more than I do, so. Yeah, no, I, I mean, Paramex came, and by then, you know, a lot of innocent bystanders that were, you know, walking or biking by, uh -huh. you know, saw something happening, so they kind of rushed and helped me, you know, take turns, do compressions. While, oh, do they really had help? Yeah, yeah, so that was, that was huge. Well, how long was that span? I mean, you're out there um, pump, 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 pump. I, maybe it was 10, 10, minutes? 10, 20 minutes. But it seemed, seemed like an hour, didn't it? It seemed like a mm -hmm. second, an hour, everything right. in between. It does. Um, so, yeah, they kind of were helping me. And I had never met these people in my life. They just stopped and kind of helped do CPR while I was trying to talk to paramedics. And then, wow. 
uh, paramedics came eventually, and they then they started doing you know compressions and CPR the right way. Yeah, <laughs> the professional way. <laughs> They're probably like, way. Yeah, step over. Let me let me show you how. Let, let me handle this. Uh -oh. okay, while you were in the hospital, once they got you to the hospital, they tell me you did something called um, uh, this unique therapy called therapeutic hypothermia. Hmm. What is that, and how did that work? Yeah, so I mean, it basically kind of freezes her body to the slow point. it down. Yeah, it kind of slows you know all of her you know, organs mm -hmm. and functions, things like that. Cause she was, they had, they had, I'm trying to think of the, or she wasn't unresponsive when she got to the hospital because they were able to, you know, defibrillate her back um, on the way there, but they had, they had, you know, put her um, using, you know, pain meds and things to like keep her under so they could, you know, regulate and figure out, you know, what her body was doing. At first they had you sleeping like 20 hours a day after the lightning strike. So you were gonna be unconscious most of the time. How's your energy now? You doing okay? Yeah, I'm feeling much closer to normal now. Um, pretty normal energy levels. I get tired a little easier now. So I try to take things slow, like listen to my body. Like I, I joke with my friends, like I have a two activity per day limit now. <laughs> <laughs> if I have work and an appointment, then that's it for the day. So just taking things slow, like physically. Um, but I'm awake during normal waking hours, which mm -hmm. is different than before. So it's nice different to have than, that sense of normal. Different than before the strike? Um, or different just in the beginning before, after the strike? Yeah, after the strike, okay. yeah. So you were sleeping like, well, 20 hours a day is a long time to be sedated. Right, yeah. Yeah, so I was sleeping a lot, especially, I mean, probably in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And then like when, mm -hmm. after we got home. How long were you in the slept hospital? a lot. Uh, I want to say it was like, at least five days. Wow. Five. And they send you home. Mm -hmm. And still say sleep a lot? Or uh, you just did? No, they just, they just, you know, let her take her body at her own pace. And her, she was just really fatigued. And yeah. She was really tired all the time. And, and a lot of that led to just sleeping most of the day. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you both look like you're in, you're in pretty decent shape. You work <laughs> out, you run, you walk. What do you do for exercise? I'd like to take our dog on walks. In case it's just long walks? Yeah, so the first walk that I took him on after getting back from the hospital. Not good? I, I went too far. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it'd be good for us to get our legs and everything moving again, but um, I was pretty sore pretty immediately after we got back home. So. But the energy, you said the energy level's back. Yeah. You think your capacity is there. Yeah. So now you're walking the dog at great length. Yeah. Or you could. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about your real friend, Pac, because you've been here how many years now? Originally from uh, Kansas. We moved the summer of 17, so. so a long time. It's so a good bit, yeah. And you have some friends. You have a tribe. Yeah. A group of people. Your friends, yeah. your homies, mm. everybody from the <laughs> church, your, your neighborhood, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, And so they were able to rally around you and help you out with all this? Yes, they, they came immediately. I mean, I called uh, one of my closest friends. Her name's Tiffany, and she, she's like a sister to us, uh, to me. And yeah, she came, she was the first call, you know, cause we don't have immediate family here in right. Florida. They're all in Kansas. So didn't really know, I didn't really know who to call at first, honestly. <laughs> like, uh, usually this is where you would call your parents, but uh, not this time. But, you know, we have a really good close group of friends that, you know, we kind of closed that circle and those people were there for us. And they, they actually stayed in, in the hospital in the ER with me throughout the whole night, um, just waiting, you know, they didn't, we didn't have a lot of answers to things then, mm -hmm. but they were kind of helping me have some kind of sense of normalcy, wow. you know, a laugh here and there, a joke here and there. So really grateful for our friends that were there through all of that. So what were the doctors saying to you? They're, they had to be saying like, okay, she's doing a little better. Mm -hmm. This could be it. She's mm -hmm. doing a little better. This could be it. Or mm -hmm. they're saying, she's going to come all the way back. You be cool. Yeah, well, it was uh, it was a mixed bag. There's they told us, you know, obviously there's not a lot of data on on these types of incidents. Like you have had incidents where people will get struck by lightning and it's obviously fatal. Other times, well, they'll just pop right back up and go back to whatever they were doing. So, and there's there's a, it's very uncommon, but you know, it happens more than you would think. So there's not just not a lot of data to, to you know have a good correlation of what those things could look like. So. It was kind of just, you know, we'll see how today goes, see how mm -hmm. the next day goes. Lots of tests, lots of every acronym you can think of for <laughs> tests as they perform those. Right, so they say your brain waves are working fine. You're good. It didn't turn you into Spider Woman. <laughs> no, fortunately, no. no superpowers or anything. We don't know yet. <laughs> That's so. What a drag. What a drag. I was kind of hoping for you that maybe you could be, you know, the new Iron Woman. You never know. <laughs> All right, let's talk. You were walking your dog. What kind of dog do you have? He's a boxer. His name's Drake. So his name still is Drake. He came through? Mm. Yeah. 
he, you said wow. you, when he, you came outside, he was yeah. just standing there right beside me. Yeah, he so. did run. I mean, he's a really good, very well-trained dog, but when I came out and I saw Becca unresponsive, he was just kind of standing around, just kind of didn't know what to do either. He's probably really <laughs> shook from the noise and whatever he saw. But he didn't abandon there. her. No, no, he didn't. He stayed right there. He actually got bit by an ant somehow <laughs> in that process. Uh, so that's the only damage he had <laughs> at that point was an, a little ant bite. Was he on a leash or was he just walking beside you? Would have been on a leash. Yeah. yeah. We loose leash walk him, so. But yeah, he's just, he's just stood around. Okay. Let's talk about you again. Uh, you missed some big stuff. Obviously, you're going to be <laughs> laid out five days and then a couple of months at the house. You missed the concert. Yeah. <laughs> I did miss the Beyonce concert, so I was <laughs> very bummed about that. <laughs> I texted him multiple times. Yes. I don't remember, but while I was in the hospital, I texted him multiple times. I missed it. And then, you know, I wouldn't remember. And then I'd text him an hour later, I missed the concert. concert. Yeah, <laughs> maybe you did. Very bummed. <laughs> and so you've not heard from Beyonce. She's not going to do a makeup just for you? No, unfortunately, <laughs> I don't think so. Still holding out, though. Okay, I totally understand that. All right, let's talk about the GoFundMe. Some of, um, obviously, mm. we all have insurance, or at least most people should sure. uh, have insurance. It's very dangerous for you not to have insurance. You do have insurance. Yes. But a lot of your hospital stuff was out of network, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes. Yeah, so... Yeah, we didn't really have a, a choice in which hospital to go to. Luckily, there's a hospital just down the block from where we live, mm -hmm. so that's the obvious choice of where you know they should have taken her. Uh, and yeah, everything unfortunately was out of network for us. You know, but we're still in the process of you know waiting to hear back. You know, insurances talking to hospitals, talking to us, and trying to figure out you know what's you know what's going to happen. So, so we're I think we're in limbo right now, trying to figure out all those details, but. Um, it can, once you see those, you know, itemized things, it can be kind of... Oh, yeah, of, freaks you out. <laughs> it can freak you out. You freak see out. all those numbers, but... Right, they're huge. So. All right, well, listen, guys, thank you so much for being here. I'm so glad this all worked out. Mm -hmm. A, you're like a poster child for recovery, mm -hmm. and B, you're kind of a cautionary tale for me. Because mm -hmm. anytime it gets dark and you hear the rumbles of thunder, my head starts spinning. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. guys, guys, lightning, lightning. And I deal with this all the time. I'm so thankful that you made it through. Yeah. And I'm kind of... Sounds weird to say this. I'm happy you didn't hear a rumble before you went out. Mm. Because if you'd heard a rumble and then gone out and gotten struck, I'd be like wagging my finger at you. <laughs> you should not, you know, I'd turn it to your dad, like, Dad says don't do that, <laughs> whatever you do. But congratulations on making it through. Thank mm. you. I appreciate you both coming in and share Thanks. your tale. Yeah, thank you so I much. It. And thank you for joining us today on Talk to Tom. Anytime you want to get a question answered, feel free to log on to clickorlando.com forward slash talk to Tom and stick around as I answer some of your lightning and storm related questions coming up on the other side of the break. Welcome back to Talk to Talk. Earlier in the show, I spoke to Laura and Rebecca Soto about what it was like to get struck by lightning. I don't remember much, but my guess is probably like getting ready to rain outside, and so I wanted to take the dog out real quick before the rain started. I felt like just a few seconds after she had stepped outside is when I'd heard the boom. It set the alarms off in our apartment. So oh, it, it shook like, the house? Yeah, like I've just never experienced something like that before. And so when I went outside, uh, this is when I found her lying face down on the, on the sidewalk near the grass. Her stay in the hospital and what life has been like ever since. I get tired a little easier now, so I try to take things slow, like listen to my body, like, I, I joke with my friends, like, I have a two-activity-per-day limit now. <laughs> if I have work and an appointment, then that's it for the day. Wow, their story is amazing, isn't it? Thank you for sticking around for that. And thank you for staying with me. I'm Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells. Now, before our show's over, I want to make sure we take time to answer some of your storm-related questions and provide some, some insight on lightning safety. It's one of my pet peeves. Here's what you need to know if you're outside during a storm, or if the weather looks like it's about to get active. First of all, you really, honest to goodness, should not be trapped in a storm. I know it happens from time to time. You go to Publix, it's happened to me. You go into the store and you shop for a little bit, and when you come out, it's gray or dark or overcast, ominous or maybe even raining. But you really don't need to be trapped like that anymore. I really need you for your safety, not mine. And if you don't want to download my app, I get it. But the WKMG News 6 weather app is the best friend you could have. It's free. I mean, you can't beat free. It's free. And when you download the News 6 weather app, it's like having radar in your pocket. 
it has a lightning tracker on it. So all you have to do is go open the app up, go to the radar, click the pancake, open up lightning, and you can see where the latest lightning strikes are, how close they were to you, and what's going on with the lightning so it's easy to make sure you're not in danger of being struck by lightning. Um, the other thing you need to do is that you need to be able to figure out how far away the lightning is if you're starting to hear the rumbles of thunder. When you hear the rumble of thunder, start counting. You see a flash of lightning? See the lightning in the distance? Start counting. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. Every four seconds, the sound of that lightning, the rumbles of that thunder from that lightning, can travel about a mile. Sometimes here in Florida, it's, um, it's every five seconds, depending on how far away it is and what the weather conditions are like and how much it's been raining. But overall, we're talking about four seconds per mile. Time it out. Rule of thumb is if you can see it, you should flee it, run away from it. But if you hear it, fear it and get yourself inside. But honest to goodness, if you hear it rumble of thunder and you look up in the distance, you see another lightning strike, you start counting. And it takes, say, 10 seconds for the rumble to get there. That's two and a half miles away. Run to your car real quick. It's not perfect, but if it's four miles away, I, you might still run for your car. If it's a mile away, don't run for your car. Don't. If it's less than four or five seconds, don't. If you can hear that rumble of thunder, you can be struck by lightning. The last rule of thumb to remember is anytime you're hearing the rumbles of thunder, you have to wait until 30 minutes after the last rumble to be clear. Okay? What I mean by that is more people are killed by the approaching storm and by the leaving storm than at the height of the storm. Because at the height of the storm, it's rocking, it's rolling, boom, boom, boom. You're hearing all kinds of rumbles of thunder and lightning, and you know to stay inside. But as the storm is approaching, people think, well, I've got time, maybe it's not that close, and then boom, it gets them. Or if the height of the storm has just passed, things are slowing down, they're like, oh, okay, it's easing up, I'm gonna run for the car. Don't do that. Don't be that person. Wait until you hear the rumble of thunder, and then 30 minutes has passed since you heard it. So every, reset your watch. Every time you hear a rumble of thunder, reset your watch. Those are my tips. Keep yourself alive. All right, we got a few questions for you. We're going to start out with a question from our friend Mel. Mel wants to know, why or how does Florida produce so many lightning strikes? Well, Mel, we've addressed this from time to time here on Talk to Tom, and we are like a laboratory for lightning. We're the perfect setup. What you need for that is you need thunderstorms going on and we get them in boatloads or buckets or in abundance, depending on how you want to talk about it. We have our colliding sea breezes right over land. They hit and lift and when they lift, kaboom. So because of our sea breeze showers, because of the fact we have humidity, because of the fact we have lift and we have cool air aloft, we get loads of lightning. So we are the lightning capital of North America. Almost year in and year out, the I-4 corridor is there. That's the reason we get all of the lightning strikes. We don't lead the world, we do lead the country. So lightning is one of our biggest killers. It really, really is. People talk a lot about, you know, we, we cover hurricanes, we cover tornadoes in depth. Hurricanes coming, we're on for 36 hours in a row. We don't cover lightning for 36 hours in a row. We don't, you kind of need to be educated on your own. We have done better. We used to lose 10 souls a year here in the state of Florida due to lightning. We've cut that number down in the last 20 years or so to about five per year. I'd like to see it go lower. All right, next question from our friend John Boss, who says, hey, don't rubber tires shield you from the ground during lightning storms? No, John, they do not. What really saves you if you're in a car is the fact that lightning strikes the car and the cage of the car protects you and it shoots out through the ground. That's the way we do um, most of the protecting. Our last question comes to us from our friend Susie Johns. Should you close the window in your house if there's lightning in the area? You know what, Susie? That's not a bad idea because lightning can strike from the side. It can come in. Probably you're okay, but anytime there's not a barrier between you and the lightning, you're in trouble. So when you seek shelter, get inside, close the windows if you can, make sure you're not exposed. If you're on the pool deck on your lanai and you're covered, you're not totally safe. All right, thank you for the questions. Remember, anytime you have a question about the weather, just send it in to clickorlando.com slash talk to Tom. I'll get it answered for you. And you can download Talk to Tom from wherever you are, or wherever you listen to your podcast or watch anytime on News 6 Plus. Just download the app for your smartphone or TV and start watching today. 
see you.